artistic director and resident designer Catalyst Theatre to chat with us about creative catalysts. Hi, I'm Bretta. Hi, I'm Jonathan. 16 years ago, we had a dream to build a theatre company that would take Made in Edmonton projects and put them on the international map. Our company is called Catalyst, and we are here to tell you the six-minute version of our story. Our first move was to take over this derelict warehouse on Gateway Boulevard. It had 12-foot ceilings. The roof was so bad that every time it rained outside, it rained inside. We had to keep moving the producer's desk just to try to keep her dry. And we had to go to the gas station to use the toilet. In fact, the best part of the building was the parking lot. So that's where we decided to stage our first show. In our first year, we created six new projects while we were simultaneously renovating the space. If you weren't needed in rehearsal, you were up a ladder painting or drywalling. It was incredibly ambitious, it was totally ridiculous, and we almost killed each other. <laughs> but we didn't. And at the end of that year, uh, we chose the best show of the season. We got on a plane, and we headed for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There we were competing with uh, nearly 3,000 companies from all over the world. We were lucky enough to receive a coveted uh, Best of the Festival Award and had our first sellout run. After that, we got a little smarter. We only focused on one new project a year. We still had absolutely no money, could hire no one, so we had to learn how to do everything ourselves. Uh, I wrote the scripts, I composed the music, and directed the actors. And I designed the sets and the lighting and the costumes. Um, just with pretty much anything we could find, big, borrowed, or stolen. So scrap metal, um, bubble wrap, butcher paper, masking tape, the telephone book, a few of our favorites. <laughs> Over the next several years, we spent so much time working this way, we kind of became experts in the fine arts of recycling and multitasking. And uh, much to our surprise, uh, this became known as our company style. It was about uh, big, bold, distinctive productions created by a small team out of whatever materials we had at hand. At the real heart of this always was a collaboration, though. It was uh, John and I are in a constant dialogue. We call it a tennis match of ideas. Every offer we each make uh, influences the way a piece evolves, how it looks, how it sounds, how it feels. And throughout this process, we constantly feel like we're on the brink of total failure. We flail around in the dark. We have no idea where we're going. And um, we hope for the best. <laughs> And we try not to give up. In fact, we don't give up. Uh, even if it means spending six months writing a script and cutting all the dialogue two days before your first audience uh, because you're convinced it's just not working. Even if it means freezing, standing in a shower, fully clothed, trying to wash fake blood out of a pair of silver metallic chaps. What was I thinking? <laughs> we just are obsessed with placing the bar just out of reach. <laughs> so why do we do this? The theater we're trying to create is a full-on sonic and visual experience. We want to take audiences on a real ride. The kind of ride that feels like you're falling into a bedtime story or you're living in a pop-up book from your childhood. A, a ride that reminds us what it is to daydream. Uh, that carries you away into something magical. We want audiences to get lost in the story, to have it lift off the page, to forget about their day and just disappear into some crazy world we've created. We want to speak to the uh, visceral, to the gut-wrenching, belly-laughing, full-grown kids that we all are. So as the last two standing from that year, um, we've learned a few things. Along with creating shows, uh, we've been developing a way of working. A uh, way of working that's based on ten simple words. Words that we use to remind ourselves of what it is that's working for us. And each of these words happens to start with the letter R. So weird. Responsibility. 
to your craft, to your team, and to your audience. There is no such thing as not my problem. Respect. Enter into all your relationships with a sense of humility, generosity, and curiosity, and tr try to trust that everyone you're working with actually knows more about what they're doing than you do. Responsiveness. We try to stay open to everything and anything that comes at us and trust our creativity and our intuition. Rigor. Never stop at good enough. Repetition. Over and over and over and over. <laughs> Release. No one to let go. Anything can end up on the cutting room floor if it'll make the show better. Risk. Being terrible. Looking really foolish and being totally vulnerable. Resilience. 16 years later, it kind of speaks for itself. Refinement. Try to be the very, very best at what you do. And restlessness. Uh, never settle, never stop learning, and never give up on putting yourself in situations that force you to be in unknown territory. So 16 years later, a lot of these dreams actually have come true. We've been all across Canada. You've been into the US. Uh, to the UK, Australia. We took a show off Broadway, and we managed to take a show to the West End of London. We have taken this product, whatever this product is, we have taken this product, and we've played to audiences of three people and audiences of 1,300, and we feel like we're just getting started. So for us, this uh, collaborative journey uh, is an ongoing one. It's about investing in each other and in all the people we work with, with no predetermined outcome. It's about believing in what we do, even when we're not sure exactly what it is we're doing. And it's about choosing every day to keep playing the trust game. So we take a page from the Queen of Hearts handbook. As a team, we can believe in up to as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.